I've been asked if it's necessary or beneficial to use a high performance power cable after a line conditioner. And this also gets into the question in general of using high performance power cords with line conditioners. The answer really depends on the line conditioner for one thing. Um, there are several considerations. Um, if the line conditioner doesn't limit current, then of course the power cord feeding the line conditioner and the power cord after the line conditioner feeding your equipment shouldn't limit current either, so it would need to be a high performance power cord. If you're using the power cord that came with the line conditioner and it happens to be a generic power cord that's not a particularly heavy gauge, this is already going to limit current going into the line conditioner and there's no way to put that back after it's already gone. So if the current's already been limited, um, then it doesn't matter anymore what power cord you use after the line conditioner. So the real answer is you should be using a high performance power cable uh, both before and after the line conditioner to make sure uh, you're filtering out any noise and also that you're not limiting current. So it's essentially it's the weakest link principle. Basically everything has to be of the same quality in terms of performance um, to get the full benefit.